This video is sponsored by Fotros. Fotros, because weather planning was yesterday. When there's one thing in photography I should call the most important one, it is definitely emotions. I mean, you could nail the composition, you could even get the perfect light, but all that gets worthless when your viewers don't feel anything when they engage with your photos. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can bring this little extra into your photographs, how you can evoke emotions with your images. Hi, my friends, very nice to see you. I could often ask Christian, how can I bring this extra into my photographs? You know that my photos stand out from the rest. And when I looked at their photo stamp, in many cases the composition simply didn't work, or in other cases the light didn't work, or there were any technical issues that simply didn't work. So these things are definitely important. But I've also seen already lots of photos that were technically clean, so there was anyway anything that was missing. And we are talking about emotions. And emotions are really important because viewers of image simply don't charge after composition, light and things like that. Photographers maybe charge after that when they look at an image. But for the common viewer who just wants to hang up a photo on his wall, the only thing that counts actually are emotions. Now, I'm engaging with emotions already almost my whole life as a photographer. And my first approach was that I tried to reflect my own emotions with my photographs. My basic idea was simply that, you know, when I would be able to bring my own emotions into my photos and the viewer stand would feel those same emotions just by looking at my photos, then the photo would get a masterpiece. So this was my master plan, if you want. Understanding my own emotions and trying to bring them into my photos so that the viewers get the same emotions I had when I took them. But the thing is, and it took me decades to understand that, to be honest, but the thing is, it doesn't work like that. There is no yeah, way to transport emotions from the photographer into a photograph and then to reflect it back to a viewer. So there is no kind of ping pong effect or so. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a nice thought, so it doesn't work like that. And the reason therefore is simply that emotions are something very, very personal. When 10 people look at one and the same photograph, it is very likely that they get completely different emotions out of it. And I would say, let's try that out right now. Let's make a little experiment. I will show you some example photos along this video, positive examples and negative ones. For the positive examples, please leave some comments below this video about what you feel when you look at these photos. This would really, really be interesting. Do you feel happy, afraid, overwhelmed, sad, whatever it is? Write this into a comment below this video. And also read the comments of the others, of course, just to find out how different the personal perception can be. Well, the thing is, our emotions are connected with our experiences. That means when I show you an image of a spectacular mountain, for instance, it is very likely that some of you will feel moved by the drama. Some could be yeah, just happy because they like to climb up mountains or so. Others could feel fear because they know maybe someone who fell down a mountain or so. However, based on the viewer's experience, there are different emotions evoked. So it can't work like trying to reflect my own emotions into my photographs in the hope that others will feel identically. But there is anyway something else we can do to get a bit more control over the emotions of our viewers. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's first of all look at how we can in general evoke emotions with an image. Basically, there are three ways to evoke emotions with a photo. And the easiest one is by using the effect of mirror neurons. And unfortunately, this just works when we have people in our photograph, a model for instance. And as this is a landscape photography channel, I will only touch on this briefly. The basic idea is simply that the facial expression of the model affects the viewer. It is very likely that, you know, a smiling, friendly model will affect more positive emotions, whilst an angry, afraid or sad model will affect more negative emotions. 
in other genres of photography, where we don't have people in our photos, like it is in landscape photography, obviously, we have to deal with other methods. Yeah, I mean, we could try to photograph the smile of Mother Nature, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. What I do in landscape photography is I simply try to convey mood with my image. And based on that mood, there are emotions evoked in the viewers. Let's have a look at this image here. I took it right at the moment when the amazing thunder cloud moves towards that spectacular mountain. So there is this bittersweet mood of happy shiny landscape and dramatic dangerous sky, which gets conveyed with this image. But there are different emotions evoked in different fields. Some of you might feel positive emotions due to that happy illuminated middle, right? But some of you might maybe even feel yeah, a bit of fear or so, because, or respect or anything like that, because a thundercloud like that yeah, could be rather dangerous. Again, leave me a comment about what you feel when you look at this image. But we don't need necessarily complementary moods in an image to get different emotions emoked. Let's take another photo, this here for instance. What do you feel when you look at this one? Do you feel relaxed maybe? Because you feel undisturbed by that short visibility given by the fog or so. Or do you maybe fear the fog maybe? I mean, what, what if there would be lurking a wolf or bear behind there in the woods or so? You see, we have again complementary emotions, although the image doesn't convey complementary mood. There is not a positive and a negative mood side by side like it was in the image before, but there could anyway be a well, completely different emotions. So we have the effect of mirror neurons given by people in a photograph. We have mood we can use, but there's also a third way to evoke emotions, which is really, really strong. Let's have a look at this image here. What do you feel when you look at this image? In this photo, your emotions completely depend on what you see. Maybe you are happy because of this nice spring scene. Yeah, I mean, spring is so often associated with positive emotions. Maybe you see a creature lying down, hugging the garlic. Yeah, this here could be an eye, for instance, and uh, this an arm, for instance. That could still lead to positive emotions, of course. But some of you might know that wild garlic is a dangerous thing. I mean, you could eat it, it tastes fantastically. I also like it myself, by the way. But when you get a wrong one, you would die on intoxication. Now, why does this creature lie down there in the garlic? Does it love garlic so much, which would lead to positive emotions, of course? Or has he got a wrong one, maybe, which would yeah, lead to more negative emotions, on the other hand? Leave a comment below what you feel when you look at this image. However, beside mirror neurons and mood, it is the story an image does that evoke emotions. That's really, really an important thing. So now we know how emotions are evoked in general. And before I will tell you exactly how you can get more control about the emotions of your viewers, my friends, if you like this video, please give me a thumb up. You know, it helps me, it helps the algorithm, and it helps also other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. Thank you, therefore. Okay, now we know how emotions are evoked in viewers, but what can we do out in the field to support that awakening process if you want? Now, what I do is two things actually. And first of all, my goal is to create fine art photographs. I sell fine art prints on my web shop. We are not talking about yeah, snapshots or just captures of reality. And one important requirement to get a photograph to artists the integrity of the artist. So what I do is I try to translate my own emotions into mood. Because again, I can't bring my emotions into a photo, but I can convey mood with my image and I can get control over the mood. So a really, really important thing I do out in the field is I observe my emotions. How do I feel? What's going on inside me? What is the landscape doing with me? here. 
And honestly, many of my photographs are embossed by fear. Yeah, I'm a scary cat. I'm afraid of wolves, bears, falling down mountains or so, picking the wrong wild garlic. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay, I'm just careful. But yeah, of course, I don't fear all the time. I'm also often really happy. Sometimes yeah, I'm also sad as every one of us from time to time, I guess. Whatever the emotions are, whenever I enter a location, I try to find out what I feel. It's really the best possible starting point. And then I even try to boost my emotions by working myself up. And the crazy thing is, it has already an effect on finding a composition. Yeah, we tend to choose a composition based our, on our emotions. And in the next step, I simply think about which mood correlates with my emotions. In this image here, I had something like yeah, fears of that or so. Yeah, really, the trail up there was extremely dangerous. There were parts that were narrower, sloped, slippery, and there was a drop off with hundreds of meters down to death. Yeah, I will link you the video up here. It was a spectacular adventure. Really, when I took this shot here, I was already safe, so I still felt the danger in my stomach. So I, I didn't want to take a happy photograph or so. No, it was more the drama I wanted to convey. Dramatic sky, clouds dancing around the mountain, these bare areas of cracked rocks, but also that solid anchor by tranquil water, trees, life actually. Yeah, this image reflects quite well how I felt up there after the dangerous hike. Again, they are not my emotions inside this image. I just translated my emotions to mood. What you feel when you look at this image depends on your personal experience, of course. Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you what you have to feel, of course. I can just convey mood that fits to my emotions. And I do that all the time. In this image here, for instance, of Tresima, I felt a firework of emotions, as I knew already days before to get the chance of low-level clouds combined with the gap towards the setting sun. It reflects so well how I felt out there. Or this image here with these illuminated alpine huts. After a really long day with lots of hiking, I was already quite tired and cold. So I got drawn to these huts as a kind of yeah, safe haven if you want. I really felt this warmth of the light when I was out there. Again, there are not my emotions in there, I just translated them into mood. And when I took this one here, I had a steep hike in front, but I forgot my lunchbox, so I felt quite empty, finished and cold. The diagonals in the grasses here give us the illusion of wind. The same happens up with the soft clouds up here. This patch of snow supports the story of coldness, but I was anyway happy to be up there, which is reflected by this illuminated part in the midground. I mean, these things were anyway there, of course, independent of my feelings. But finding out my own emotions and boosting them even allows me to understand which elements are touching. And viewers will maybe feel something completely different, but they anyway confront them with the same touching features in my compositions. Because they definitely evoke emotions, it is just almost undefined what they are. I say it almost undefined, because there's anyway one thing we can control here. Okay, so we have learned already that there is no way to evoke specific emotions. They always depend on the experiences of the viewers. And that's right, but that's not the whole truth to be honest. There is indeed a way to get at least a tiny bit of control over the emotions of our viewers. We can't evoke specific emotions, but what we can do is we can support comfortableness and uncomfortableness in an image. What I do quite often is I bring image intentionally out of balance when I want to support uncomfortableness in an image. When I say out of balance, I don't only mean the balance of visual weights, I also mean yeah, that I let colors not perfectly match between elements maybe. Sometimes I give intentionally not enough space for elements to breath or so.
sometimes I underexpose or overexpose some parts in my image on purpose, which is usually a big no-no, especially when we want to print an image afterwards. When we break it down, I intentionally put some compositional mistakes into my photographs just to support the uncomfortableness of the viewer, just to increase yeah, the chance that it is finally more the drama that stands out over a happy feeling or so. It is basically the same principle as it is used in horror movies. Yeah, think about people looking out of the frame or skewed horizons or something like that. Uh, I would say from all the techniques to evoke emotions, in my experience, the strongest one is by far Storytelling. And I made already a comprehensive video about Storytelling, I will link it here for you. And friends, I hope you liked this video of yes, share it with your friends, don't forget to tune in next week, there will come a fantastic video as well. I thank you so much for watching, see you next time, bye.